Welcome to the Seedman Podcast. Welcome everybody to the Seedman Science Podcast. It is Tuesday night and we are back. Thank you for joining us. We love you so much. I hope you know that. We really do. You guys are all amazing. Uh, hang out with us in the comments. Talk along with us. But we are coming back with another mixtape episode. I'm going to make these a little more uh more of a thing like uh, i would really like to cover some more things and i and i know everybody loves the mixtape episodes i love doing the mixtapes episodes uh tonight we have a great guest trevor stottlemyer from ambassador radio medios here you heard him on the last mixtape episode uh and of course i have producer paul here how can i not he is uh the chewy to my han the uh, well all right so if i'm han me okay Maybe he's wicked because he's so adorable. That's a, that's all I'm going to say. So, <laughs> but guys, thank you again so much. I want to thank our sponsors for tonight. Pure Hemp Botanicals. They have a special offer for you down below. Go check them out. We'll talk about them in a little bit. Uh, but yes, go check out the link down below. But after the show, you got to watch and listen, all right? Uh, guys, please, if you are out there, make sure you are rating and reviewing us as you listen along. Uh, make sure you hit the like, the subscribe, and hit, the, hit that little bell so you know when other great shows come out. We truly appreciate it. But I want to get these guys in here. I want to talk mixtapes because uh, I am taking you on a journey tonight on the Intermic. Let's get into it. All right, producer Paul and Trevor. Thank Hello, you guys. Hello, Paul. <laughs> James is here in the comments. Thanks for joining in. Captain McMerica. Is that out? <laughs> can I can I share that? Um, James did an awesome stop anima, uh, stop motion animation of uh, Deadpool Lego um oh. movie. Hmm. And it has uh, Captain America in it, and I uh, I was very honored to be asked to play the voice of Captain America. Awesome! So I oh, cool. it, that is out. I will make sure I'm gutting on it. I will make sure that I put it in the link so everybody can find it. And uh, after the show, I'll do that for the descriptions. You got to check this out. It's so much fun. He did such a great job. Uh, so thank you so much, James, for letting me be a part of it. I really truly appreciate it. I was so excited, and I heard my voice. I was like. It's pretty. It's pretty rad. I feel really good about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but guys, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Uh, now, Trevor, before we get started, I would love for you to tell everybody about Ambassador Radio and Media and what you're doing over there. Well, you can find us at ambassadorradio.org. Uh, from there, you can uh, go to all of our social media and YouTube. Uh, the main concept behind Ambassador Radio is like basically 1990s college radio format uh, available terrestrially, but also online, looking at the B-side of musical history. So, you know, if you're into really crazy, eccentric music, um, I think you would enjoy it. And yet again, that's ambassadorradio.org. Uh, and uh, the main goal is, uh, you know, to educate people about music, but I love doing the show in an internet copyright friendly way that honestly every time i make the show it is as educational for me as my listeners so that's what i do when i duh very yeah. often awesome. and and uh we, now we've worked you've been on the show plenty of times we've had talks you have been doing for the last we've done you just got 15 weeks and we're going on in our last mm -hmm. episode 16 uh, our godzilla retrospective uh, you joined me for that whole journey, yeah, which uh, is you know. was amazing. And yet again, I have to thank you, um, everybody, Scene Snobs, for inviting me on that amazing journey. Oh, we we're happy to have you, man. That was so much fun. Uh, I had such a great time with that. Um, and and I, I, yeah, I just I loved it. I loved having you there, doing it, and being a part of it. So, just thanks, man, for doing that. And you guys should check that thank out because we had such a good time. It really was. Um, so enough uh, cheap self promotion. <laughs> <laughs> no no well not of course trevor always promote trevor ambassador <laughs> radio media my right. cheap <laughs> somebody does i didn't know anybody promoted me at all i will always promote you buddy um Thanks. of course man uh so yes definitely go check them out they are linked down below so i you know love for you to go check them out follow give them all the love because trevor's doing some awesome stuff and keeping it indie to points where I didn't know music existed until I met Trevor and I'm, and I'm like loving it now. And, and to do it completely not for profit. 
I know. Yeah, that's a, a beautiful thing, man. And just for or the utter stupidity, you can. I mean, it's either way. So. <laughs> that's very fair. That's very fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, guys, we are here. We're doing another mixtape episode, but I thought it would be fun. And the guys know this. We've been putting our list together, T- songs or uh, theme songs or whatever you want, but it has to come from a television show. Mm-hmm. All right, so. Mm-hmm um you can be theme you could have a whole mixtape of theme songs you can mix in songs from and but i want to know what show that's the thing so like guys if if you were commenting along with us tonight while we do this live uh make sure that you let us know what are some of your favorite songs and what from what shows and why uh we'd love to hear it and talk about it a little bit um but yeah and if you guys are listening to this later do the same i love to hear those things but come on I'm going to so in advance, it's okay. Some of my mixtape are distinctly television-based, but cool. they're not songs. Hmm. Uh, but they're, they're, they're like sounds that are like okay. automatics. I, um, you know what? We, I didn't think of that, but there's no parameters anyway. Okay, it's from you. TV. And you're good to go. <laughs> I want to hear them. Uh, thank you again, James. Appreciate you having me on. Uh, and I, anytime, if you ever need help, please let me know. Uh, and Chris, what's going on, bud? Thanks for joining in tonight. <laughs> All right. I'm going to uh, – I, I have kind of a story for mine, so I think I'm going to take the last spot again. <laughs> so who would like to go first? I'm down for I whatever. See, I'm going to hear Paul's. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Paul, you can get it off, baby. I love it. I love it. Yay. <laughs> no, it'll be good. You got this. I have faith. <clears throat> All right. So let's let's start with the oldest show first. So I began my list from Happy Days. And it's going to begin with the Happy Days theme song or Happy Days. Um, from the Happy Days TV show, we also have Splish Splash, followed by Yakety Yak, and Put Your Head on My Shoulder. Not Blueberry Hill? No. <laughs> there's so a lot of songs wanna, from there you want to listen ahead. to a lot of 50s rock is what i'm gathering mm-hmm. yes yes okay and then uh the next show that i pulled a couple songs from is uh the wonder years once again it's going to be the theme song as well uh when a man loves a woman and then oh baby baby let's see and then we got skins i don't know if you guys ever watched that tv show oh, i know exactly when you're gonna say it was on my list <laughs> so from skins the uk version um that's the first time i heard portishead which is undenied um hummingbird portishead oh yeah i love portishead mm-hmm. and that was my first time i love these and beth gibbons mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, great too good. <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah you're that going on a wild album. ride though like i gotta can i can i interject for a second because <laughs> again it is a podcast so i want to make sure right. we uh we touch down on things <laughs> a little bit but like <laughs> you're going on a wild ride here because you kick it off in the 50s mm-hmm. and you hop skip and jump right forward yeah so what's your reasoning for that like in your mind this mixtape you go from like oh. that from the 50s but like you do get slower mm-hmm you know, towards the end, and then you pick it up again. So, like, what 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 was your feeling when you were doing that? So, like, I feel like all my playlists are kind of a mixed bag. So, like, all these bring back different memories, like Happy Days. My mother introducing me to that on Saturday mornings. We'd watch that for the first like two hours from eight to ten. Nice. Um, the Wonder Years. One of my close friends in middle school turned me on to this. He was like, "You've never watched the Wonder Years? We need to watch this." And he had like the whole collection. So we spent a couple weekends just watching all those uh skins out you know it's so crazy to me that like you had to watch the wonder years on a dvd box set like that was like I, and, and trevor i'm pretty sure you're right there with me that was like you had to be home to watch that i mean you might have been a little bit older and i don't know how wonder years fell on that level and like i think it started in like 88 or something like that mm-hmm. for you. like if that was like one you gravitated towards like for me it was I, you know, it was like he was around my age, I guess, when it started, or a little bit older. So you kind of look mm-hmm. up, but like you're straight up. Like, I'm glad it transcended to another generation, my friend. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, man, those episodes and Winnie, man, growing up. Yeah. <laughs> now she'll do first Matthew, celebrity crush. Matthew right out of the door. 
<laughs> she's a mathematician. Um, so what okay. else you got for me? Is that it? For okay. So, uh, no. So from skins, uh, we also have time to pretend that's MGMT. And then, um, I also pulled from skins, U S version, which sucked. Um, but the <laughs> song I picked from there was love lockdown. Um, okay. And then we're going to move up and we're going to get judgy. Cause, uh, I love vampire diaries and, uh, we got Weight by M83, uh, Kiss Me, and then Gravity. And those are my songs. Okay. I like it. I like that a lot. I got nothing against it. So, uh, Trevor, <laughs> how, what do you think about that list? I, I loved it. I, I love the fact that he, it was a smaller list, but it went deep into a show. So, like, if you're going to appreciate a show in its entirety, where does the music fall? You know, is the music also part of the greatness of that show for whatever individual person? So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, and something like that, I do agree it is. Yeah, Uh, I'm probably, I know for me, I don't know how many people do this, but I mean, uh, movies and also TV you hear music in it and you wait for the credits because yep. you know the, you might not even want to see the movie again, but you need to know what those songs are. Um, yep. I do that all the time. So I figure that's probably something you do also. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, how about you, Trevor? Okay. Well, I was going to do the uh, television theme songs as it connected to me personally, do the, you know, I'm growing up in this, and I discovered I'm just not a TV person, and I wasn't raised that way. So I decided to look at TV themes, songs, and sounds that have transcended their time period to literally becoming part of our culture. They don't have to be connected with that television show anymore to mean things that that tele- television show meant. So. So it's, it's not that long a list, but... I love it. Okay, so my first is, you know, number one, you know, at one time I was, uh, uh, but any self-respecting goth has to say The Addams Family. Uh, the theme's The Addams Family. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody in the room goes... <laughs> and, and, you know, it's even used a lot in early childhood education uh to teach you know numbers and all this kind of stuff because it is such a perfect little song performed by a guy named Vic Mizzy and you know it just fits to everything and also I think even more because of the song than because of the show we've seen the rebirth of the Adams family concept again and again and again. So my second uh song is a theme and um yet again it's, a, it's an item that honestly person doesn't even have to have seen this at all but as soon as they hear it guys batman, batman baby. exactly <laughs> so my second oh. is a theme to batman because that still means cape crusader no matter what um, my next was by Frankie Lane, and he did the original Rawhide theme. Yet again, a song that is associated with the television show, but has taken on so much new meaning. But still, it makes you think of something pertaining to the Old West, even if it's being used sarcastically as, you know, like a DS situation like Godzilla and Kong. So, um... The next one is the X-Files theme. It it is so simple. Mark Snow did a soundscape that to this day, you know, you watch younger character um, and content creators, and they still use that theme. Uh, That's the sign that will last forever. That's Honestly, that one... I will tell you, it did not make my list, but for reason, because I, like I said, I went for a, a full story after a while, mm-hmm. but like that was an mm-hmm. instrumental one. For oh, me yes. Yes. It, it, it is the contemporary version of, well, okay, I'm going to move two around. It's a contemporary version to another theme 
that means so much today, whether you saw the show or not, but a majority of people associate it with the weird and the bizarre. And that is the theme to the Twilight Zone. It is universal. It, it represents something. It's been put into our vernacular. Uh, and then the biggie, in my opinion, uh, Star Trek, uh, which was partially composed by Gene Roddenberry. It, you know, just in itself, no matter who you play it for, they have feelings of this is outer space. This is space travel. It no longer associates just with Star Trek. Um, some of these are going to get shorter and shorter, so I apologize. <laughs> Uh, the baseline to Seinfeld. Oh my God! Yeah, I mean, do, literally, do, 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 do. I mean, you'll hear people <laughs> say the baseline or sing the baseline when they want to be sarcastic about so somebody's done. It's become that much part of our culture. Yep. Um, the Daily Double music from Jeopardy, which was composed by legendary Merv Griffin, has a life of its own. Uh -huh. People who have never seen Jeopardy, you're in the middle of doing something and they're waiting and it goes, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's just amazing. <laughs> I love okay, that. Okay, so my next one is The Price is Right. Uh, that one Which, for me, like, you, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but oh, you no, said, no, like, no, Jeopardy. Yeah. Like, it was that one for me. That was like the sick days. Mm -hmm. You heard, oh, see, like, you could, that's the thing, like, you're saying one, and I'm like, it, it doesn't have an effect, then you say another, and I'm like, immediately brought back. Mm -hmm. Not that I didn't love Jeopardy, of course, it's iconic, I 100% agree, but something just brought me back to, like, the days when you were <laughs> home from school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's been going on continually for so many uh, decades, but it also, you know, Dun, 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 dun. It, it's access it's you know it's winning it's you know it has a life outside of the actual show and the next one is the theme to dragnet Ooh. which is only a minute long but literally the first three notes you can put in front of anything and people associate it with the law mm -hmm. so well um, okay can I ask you this though? Yeah, in, your, in your opinion, and I don't know if it's on your list. I agree with you. When I was a kid, -na 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 -na, like that was that was the law. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that's more in, associated with the law now, or law and orders? Dun dun. Ah. Um, that's... I'm going to go in between. And I'm going to say bad boys. That's what I was about to say. I was about to be like a bad boys theme song. I always in the cop. contemporary <laughs> world, a song that to this day you hear used in just general conversation, whether it be about police, whether it be about you're doing something wrong, bad boys, bad boys. I mean, I would love to own the writing licensing uh, <laughs> right oh song God. because you would just be rich. I, yeah, I, that's probably why they keep making those damn movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. God bless. Uh, <laughs> let's see what we got here. Uh, I want to say quick uh, before. Oh, I should have a few more real quick. Oh, okay? yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah sorry. Okay. Make one. Um, Lalo Shiflin's Mission Impossible theme. I mean, besides the movies, I mean, who hasn't been doing something with somebody to go, Dun, 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 Come on it's faster, true. come on faster. <laughs> it's part of our cultural lexicon. Um, this one's an interesting one for me because it, okay, so the Doctor Who theme from 1968, uh, it was written by a guy named Ron Grainer, but it was created by a woman named Delia Debrashire and her 10 pieces. She was a tape loop experimental composer and arranger and um the theme song to doctor who is actually a very very early example of what would eventually become industrial music she's a very interesting person and uh it, it is yet again and this one goes you know other places britain you hear the doctor who theme and it's just mm -hmm. this is going to be a trippy bizarre otherworldly thing Oh, yeah. and, and then I start like taking it down <laughs> more and more and uh, just have three more. Uh, actually, I have two more. 
Okay. So it's the <laughs> NBC chimes, the three chimes. Yeah. You it just it, it, it no matter what those three chimes, people hear it and they still associate it with TV. Uh, do you know why? Time. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do not no, want no, to take no. that away from you. Please, please, please. You go. You go. You go. No, no, no. You please go first. No, because I'm probably wrong. So I would love to hear your right answer. <laughs> well, I was just gonna, so uh, nowadays you say Q-tone and people associate what's connected with all forms of media, streaming, things like that. But this was actually originally seven notes and it started back in the 1920s for radio. And it was in front of the, uh, the programming for the affiliates. So they knew when to jump over programming. And as this got shorter and shorter, it eventually just became a marketing ploy to actually associate a sound with a network. And I think it's like the first like sound I forget what year, but uh, they actually, um, NBC placed the first patent on a sound. I, and from yeah. what I understand, that was the first ever like tone they did for those. That was the one that like really they came up with. So like it was a fact I, I was watching on TikTok recently. That's why when you said that, I'm like, <laughs> I know something about this. So, so beyond <laughs> actually being an influential song, it's a very influential couple notes in the history of communication, radio, um, television, it's still to an extent used today. Yeah. And my final one uh, takes it up to, uh, I, uh, it's one I think Mick will, will um, remember. And it's the shortest and it consists of one sound and one note. And that was the opening for HBO, Home Box Office. And that it, it, that little sound, I hear it in used uh, in you know various things, whether it be sampling and songs, or it being used for you know video memes to associate things. Um, so yeah, that. there's my list, and I hope it didn't babble too much. No, you didn't. I love, <laughs> I love that list, and I love that you brought the history with it, and uh, like to the sounds especially. I love that. That's a great mm -hmm. tape. Um, okay, thank you very much you guys that's uh, like, I, I made it like an hour ago so thank you <laughs> <laughs> fair. i spent days um, <laughs> trying to think of tv songs that meant something to me and i'm like fair. i'm a movie guy you know, oh, don't worry our movie. next our next list is right up your alley <laughs> and i'll tell you off there um, i just can't believe i forgot about the adams family that's what kind of messed me up i did once not he said that i was like i was like damn it I, I wrote down twilight zone and family. it's always sunny but yeah i mean those are they are i mean they're gonna be iconic one day i was going through my life what like kind of hit right. me. I, I left a lot of stuff out that did um but before we get there let's see what everybody's saying dean singing i have the tiger and supernatural that was a good one uh carry on my wayward son from kansas from supernatural that's another good thanks james uh i had to be home to watch wonder years yeah I, that was a, that was a pretty big show uh, multiple tracks from Gravity Falls score, including the intro. Yeah, it's a great intro. Uh, we'll go on my mixtape. Uh, Brad Breek is an underrated composer. Very nice. I like that. Thank you. But Gravity Falls is an underrated show, in my opinion. Oh, uh, yeah. bring that back, too. Yeah, I've never um, watched it. Great contemporary kids it. shows. I will tell you, you, check it out, Paul. It's a good okay. show. Um, Smallville had a lot of great songs during each season. Yeah, they did, uh, especially for my age at that time. The, uh, running up that hill from Stranger Things. I'll get to that. I'm gonna leave that alone. Superhero intros such as Jessica Jones, Daredevil, X Men, Loki. Yeah, those are some fun ones. Samantha says, "I don't want to be here from one tree." <laughs> I remember that song. Yeah, <laughs> that was a big song. Um, just cheat and get ACDC, who made who uh, soundtrack from Maximum Overdrive. Fair. Uh, when we get to movies, we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, the Doctor Who score is full of great tracks. Uh, Doomsday still hurts to listen to. Mm -hmm. I, like that. I appreciate you for that. Uh, Dawson's Creek, I don't want to wait. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I, I'm, all right, guys. So I, I guess I can't stall anymore. I'll go with my list. My list is um, more autobiography. Nice. Um, 
Biographical autobiography. I'm an idiot. Um, so <laughs> I wanted to kick things off the right way with what I think is probably one of the most monumental tunes to ever come out of TV. Um, and, and it definitely helped shape young Mick's life in many ways, many, many ways. And I'm so glad that I am at a point of uh, not being shaped anymore. And that is where everyone knows your name. Mm. Theme song of Cheers. Cheers. I'm going to open it up with that because you catch them all with that song. Mm. And then what do you go to? You gotta, gotta hit them in the face a little bit. You gotta really, really take it home. And I'm going with Hootie Who by Outcast from the series Atlanta. They used wow. they used a lot of Outcast really well, but they used a lot of different music. Mm -hmm. And the way they used this, they used a couple other songs just really perfectly well. Um, and then uh, it's just. Like that, that was like to me, that's going to hit you. But how do you keep hitting them right in the face easily? You do it with the night court theme song. You get that sax and that cool blue sound. You just, that's the way it works. And then you take it to running up that hill, Kate Bush. Now, why do I add this song? Because yes, it's from Stranger Things. But when that song became popular, I was so proud of myself because I am not great at music. I'm not. A connoisseur of music like my friend trevor here uh like paul even like my wife everybody like everybody knows music i know movies right mm -hmm. so i knew that song she <laughs> we were watching that episode and that song started playing and i was so proud of myself because i was like kate bush i know this song oh my god nobody knows this song and then it became super popular and i'm like I'm the dud who knew that song. <laughs> so I uh and Kate that Bush was... finally got a much needed overlooked uh payday for years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Deserved, especially it's a great song. Very, very deserved. Long career. Yeah. Very true. Now I'm gonna take it to a place where you're all gonna get annoyed with me, but I don't care. And yes. that is I want it that way by the Backstreet Boys from the from the TV show Brooklyn Nine Nine. So I'm gonna I'm gonna settle in because then we're gonna hit them back within living color theme. Oh yeah. Oh, what a great theme song that was. But you you gotta you gotta two punch them. After you hit them with the living color theme and they feel nostalgic, you hit them with the A team theme. You knock them straight out to the point where they need to be saved, and then you save me with Remy Zero from Smallville. <laughs> um. All right. And then once you're safe, 227 theme song, you're nice, safe at home. That show was one of my favorites growing up. And that theme song was like still just like that and Night Court theme song, like just play in my head constantly. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> I love those shows. And then you jump into moving on up from the Jefferson's theme song. But once you get up there, you realize it's a ghost town. By the specials which comes from scrubs um then the monsters theme because when you're in a ghost town you also have monsters and as much as everyone loves adam's family the monsters was my show cool so i had to go with it um and then uh but you'll be safe because dracula's from houston by the butthole surfers <laughs> i love that song um and then when you find out the Dracula is from Houston, you got to find out where in the world is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> a rockapella. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and if she's not somewhere in the world, she's probably out in space. And if that's the case, Bowie's in space, Flight of the Concords. I love that episode, that Bowie episode. And Bowie's in space was one of my favorites. Um, and while you're out in space with the Bowies, you can hit that. Uh, they can't take the sky from you. The Firefly soundtrack. That's I love that that theme song. And then I got I got to add my girl, Tay Tay's in here from you, from the show you, the Exile, because 
They can take the, they can't take the skies from you, but they can exile you. But that's okay because it'll only cost you one single teardrop from Massive Attack, the house theme song. There's no way I wasn't going to add the Massive Attack in there if I can. Oh, great. And after that teardrop, I remember that she's my rainbow and I love her. She's a rainbow by the Rolling Stones used in Ted Lasso. And perfectly, by the way, I think the use of that song in that show was done wonderfully. I do have a couple of <laughs> uh, uh, runners up. I don't know if you guys do. Mm -hmm. You want to go over our runners up real quick? We could just kind of throw them out. See what yep. everybody gets to. But I, I have uh, Blue Eyes by the Carey Brothers. It's a beautiful song. And I actually liked it better used on the show than in this movie. Uh, Wild World by Cat Stevens. That was put used in Skins. Hmm. That's why when you said Skins earlier, I was like, are you talking Wild World? Because that was a really well done scene. Um, Guy Love, Donald Faison, and Zach Braff from Scrubs. Stranger Things, Master of Puppets. It was iconic. So those are my runners. Up. What do you guys have? I just had, for me, it was just a, the main theme song for Twilight Zone. Um, oh, that's a good one, yeah. And then also, like I said, with it, it's always sunny, you know, the same thing. Um, nice. That theme song. And then also, you know, just from It's Always Sunny, you can tell a fan because if you say, you know, the Day Man song, or you got to pay the trial. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, Day Man. For me, those, those <laughs> yeah, someone will start singing. Like, if I'm with my group of friends, if someone starts it, we always finish it. There's never. That makes sense. sense. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, uh, Trevor? You have any runners up? Um, when I was trying to do the autobiographical end of it, there were a few, but there weren't many. Um, number one would be J um, Jan Hammer's uh, Miami Vice theme. Uh, wow. which is so good. Uh, which that I have to say that because it lives in that same area as the theme is uh, Glenn Fry's You Belong to the City. I love that song. Uh, which, you know, at the time, Miami Vice, was that they just associated that song with Miami Vice. Um, mm. As far as other... Ooh, let me think here. Um, this is going to be a strange one, but the opening music to the Julia Child cooking show uh, always had a lot of meaning because my mother was obsessed with cooking and we always watched that. Um... <sighs> There was one other one. Oh, yeah. My all-time favorite show. And that's the theme to Hill Street Blues. Wow, um, that's a good one. Yeah, that was, uh, that was one of only a handful of shows that with my mother, you know, we, we watched it the night it came out. Yeah, that is fantastic. I, right. The only other one I would add to it is the Psych uh, theme song. Mm -hmm. That was such a good one. And I love the fact that they took it to different layers and like, if it was like when they did the uh, doo-wop episode, they boys to men came and sang the theme song, or you know, if it was like you know, it was taking place a different country, you know, it would be that the, the that language would sing the theme song. Like, they always had good little Easter eggs for that. And I always appreciate that now, if you can get your intro clever, because God knows they do not have the class they used to have back in the day with their orchestras. <clears throat> yeah. It's so sad. It really is. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good one. The Bob Ross intro. Well, these are still, these have been some good lists, guys. I really appreciate this. I'm going to be listening to them tomorrow as I put everything together. <laughs> um, so I would appreciate you guys sending me your list um, yes, for sir. sure. Um, and I really, I just again, I appreciate when you guys come on, you hang out, Trevor. Of course, I've been Thank you. having so much fun hanging out with you over on Godzilla, and then you get to do this with me you know, as well. Um, guys go check out ambassador radio and media it, it if you're not you're not learning anything i'll tell you that right now this man teaches me a lot about movies and tv and uh, i am well, thank I, you that's I, very I cool matter. say i'm somewhat of a movie expert mm -hmm. you know i went to school for it i worked in it and this man teaches me so much but i always love to learn so <laughs> I, I i don't think i enjoy anything more than you know introducing somebody to something new uh, or something that is, you know, connected to something they really already like. And, you know, I think with age, 
you get more and more, you know, interested in that, you know, you, you don't want to, you know, so to be, to be given an ability to, you know, share is, is, is very, you know, education is important, even when it comes to pop culture education, actually pop culture education in certain ways is even more important. Yeah, I, uh, I completely agree. Pop culture can very much help shape our culture. So <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I love that how you put that. And uh, yeah, we're going to let you go now because we're going to close out the show and finish up our reviews. But uh, I wanted to say thank you again so much for popping. Well, thank you guys for having yeah. me. Thank you, Nick, as always. Thank you, Paul. It was great being on with you again. It's good to see you yeah. again. I'm going to have you listen to your list. <laughs> I'll wait until you guys will both enjoy the next one. I'll, like I said, I'll tell you off air, but the next one's going to be right up the alley. You guys are going to love it. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. <laughs> Take care, bud. Well, guys, uh, I don't know if you know this, but we're two wild and crazy guys. No, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> true. <laughs> if you guys don't know this, uh, we are sponsored by Pure Hemp Botanicals. If you don't know who they are, they have some great products for you. And right now, <laughs> they're giving twenty five percent off Delta Nine THC down in the. Uh, if you go down and use our affiliate link, there are some sponsors of tonight's episode, and they it's. Just you click on the link, you'll be fine. If they ask for a code, it's snobs, and then that way it should work. So, uh, all right, guys, you ready? Always ready. Oh, and I do want to point out like, I know I didn't give like a whole read to Pure Amp Botanicals. I have used their stuff, I have used this. I like it, it's very okay. nice, you know. So, like, I don't pitch it, I don't like or try. <laughs> so, Can I ask you a question? I know it's yeah, gonna kind of get you a little. Do they ship to states where um, things might not be quite as legal as they are in other states? I know it's Delta they Nine, but might because okay, that's sorry. a great question. No, do not apologize. Not apologize, <laughs> friend. There's no stupid questions. That's a great question. Uh, now, clearly, I want to answer that for everybody so they can take their time. I believe they do. Okay. I do believe they do. Gotcha. Um, because I have told other people about them. If they do not, please let me know. I would love to hear it, but I have ordered it, sent to me, and it was great. So go ahead and read up on them. They are very good. They've been around since 2015. All types of stuff, really. Like, here, let me pull it up so everybody can see. <laughs> now we started the okay. next topic. <laughs> no, I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, uh, if you check this out. You know, oh, let me get rid of my, Ooh, my uh, honey. Actually, everybody should get the honey head on for sure. Uh, I love the honey add on. See? <laughs> it gives you all your discounts and stuff, but you're getting one with me with the 25%. Just use the snaps. Uh, so, yeah. So, like, they have the shop, so you can get pure balance, pure sleep. They have all the pet therapy. Yeah, the deal That's cool. Learn. Learn. That's what I love to say is learn CBD knowledge portal. Uh, frequently asked questions. What's going on here? Can you ship to people of all kinds? Can you ship to Honduras? <laughs> we got our own out there. <laughs> I was just saying, listen. Uh, oh, my God, right? We infuse uh, our bananas. I mean, with them. <laughs> I'm not sure, and I'm in the middle of a podcast, so I can't answer that for you, but I will find out by next episode. Uh, but, yes, I have tried their stuff. They're going some other stuff, so, like, it's pretty damn good in my opinion. But Awesome. Uh Koi is good. I use them. Okay. I don't know what Koi is. Uh, is that a rival? Are you putting a rival up to my sponsor? <laughs> Chris, I'm going to stop pulling your stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we're talking about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. So, all right, guys. We are getting ready. Uh, that's our sponsor. Also, if you would, go check out our Patreon. We do have a free tier. Uh, we also have... Um, free trials stuff like that go check it out we got a lot of fun stuff available uh for the higher ups uh higher tiers i am offering consulting time there's a certain amount of time for each tier but uh you get a certain amount of time each month to talk to me sit down like if you want to talk about any of the it could just be an ama if you wanted it but uh you could talk to me about any amount of knowledge i have in the podcasting world filmmaking all that stuff i'm happy to sit down help you find resources if you need it but that time is yours that's what's part about the patreon 
other perks as well plus you're part of the snobs nation we love having you but also join up on the discord you can join up there and it's uh have a good time with us anyway <laughs> yeah i'm not pulling that up chris <laughs> thank you guys for listening to ted talk i have two announcements to make before we get started because i don't want to do them at the end hopefully you guys stay with me on this uh this and it's linked down below. You can get your tickets at the Alamo Draft House in Winchester, Virginia. I will be hosting a QA and uh, a of the premiere of Written by Mike. That's right. Brand new film. Oh, got cut off there. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Written by Mike. I cannot wait to go check it out. I'm going to see it. And, uh, you know, I'm going to take a look at it. We're also going to be reviewing it and stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But I was asked, uh, the director is a friend of mine. He asked me to come down and, you know, do the q a i'm super excited it's actually one of my first public appearances in months because of my knee and everything uh so i'm, I'm like down i'm like excited to do this that's awesome <laughs> and uh you know get back into it so written by mike go check it out get your uh, tickets down below come hang out in winchester and uh see me i will be asking questions good ones i know i will be <laughs> <laughs> so and our second announcement is you guys are always asking about the charity events and what's going on we have another charity script read coming next month and i'm super excited for it it's coming may 17th we're reading scream baby for nice. it's gonna, sponsored by carolina fear fest all proceeds go to haunters against hate and uh, it will be right here on the scene snobs channel we're going to have a bunch of people uh, in it having fun. If you guys have been a part of we're, and we're doing something new with the script this year, uh, this time it's, it's, it's exciting. I'm super excited. Uh, we're going to do, I don't, I don't want to give it away. I have a um, question. I have so many questions. I'm excited. <laughs> it's going to be fun. We're going to add some fun stuff to it. So like come out, donate, hang out with us. You can, it's interactive, join in. We're all be playing the characters and having a good old time. Make sure you can be a part of it. It is. It's going to be a great time. Char uh, Caster Shverkov's charity script read of Scream. I cannot wait. Um, yeah, uh, but if you have questions about it, people, make sure you come out. But I'm glad we got to announce that. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's get started with these reviews. That's right. Scoop and Civil War. Start with Scoop. Scoop yeah. is the. Is the story of uh, Newsnight, a uh, BBC news channel that I guess is very good. <laughs> I don't know much about them. <laughs> <laughs> I did not realize to the magnitude of which we are calling everyone a hero now. That's just my feeling on it. But like, I did not know that the Prince Andrew interview was this insane um, and and pressing and everything else. Uh, in fact, I'm not even quite sure what question she asked. I'm pretty sure he just talked. I'm yeah. pretty sure she was like, are you friends with? And he's like, oh, well, I would, you know? Yeah. <laughs> this movie. Dry snitching on everybody. <laughs> well, basically, yeah. It's a, well, so this is the, the interview Prince Andrew did after Jeffrey Epstein was uh, arrested the first time in 2020, 2021. And, and how he kind of fumbled everything. Uh, I want to hear what you think first, Paul, because I got a rant on this one a little bit. As as far as just the movie goes, I I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, the acting I thought was actually really good, um, surprisingly, which is my rating reflects more of the acting than anything else because it was kind of boring. I didn't really give a shit about the plot. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, you uh, I wasn't going to watch it until you said we were reviewing it. <laughs> so then I did uh -huh. watch it. <laughs> um, but I mean, for what it was, it was okay. But I just like you said, I don't see why anyone could just be a hero for whatever. Because especially how they portrayed it in this, it didn't seem like they instigated it. It just seemed like dude just couldn't keep his mouth shut and just was well, like you said, like just no. spilling it, it too much. I, and, and here's the thing. So, sorry, I got to jump on the rant. Sorry, I got to jump on your on your review. That was that was. I agree with you on every set and every step of the way up on this one. Here's my rant. Can we stop treating journalists? And now I'm talking about in movies. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly, at this point, stop in real life too, treating them like heroes. But can we stop making these movies that are glorifying journalism? And the got you journalism that really isn't doing anything. 
It really isn't. Like, I'm sorry, the the bombshells, the she sheds, the all of that. It's not. You're not spotlight. You're not because none of you, you have all missed the point of what spotlight and all the president's men have done and why they've succeeded. And the post, the post is another one that was really bad. <laughs> like so, like um, all of that stuff, like not really bad. They're not terrible movies, but like. I, I, I'm a little ashamed that a bunch of them are starting to get nominated every time they come out because <laughs> gotcha journalism is. I, I am. I, I movie wise, it's so ridiculous. Spotlight got it right. All the president's men got it right. Why did they get it right? Because like if you follow all the president's men, after that you get network, you get broadcast news, and it's very much uh, it's either nihilistic, but also has the the journalist as the hero point. They're trying to live on with that. Uh, that whole idea of Walter Cronkite was the hero. Like, I get it, whatever. I don't know. I don't know Walter Cronkite. I don't care. <laughs> he wasn't a hero True. in my day, and I'm not quite sure he was. Did he stand up for uh, integrity? Maybe. And I, again, I'm not taking anything away from him. I don't know, though, because I haven't seen any like journalist, you know, in his level to everyday americans that had integrity so it's hard for me to believe that one guy did <laughs> so like maybe he did but it's hard to me you know because we've never gotten it since so like my i think my biggest issue with all of it is spotlight and I, I, let me let me put the spotlight on spotlight for this and when compare it to scoop and why scoop doesn't work because it follows the formula of everyone else spotlight didn't make or or insinuate or infer in any way that those journalists were the heroes they were journalists who found a story and the whole movie is them just investigating it right <laughs> they don't call themselves heroes it's not gotcha moments it's not that like it's they're investigating and they put together enough for an article and then they put it out and they were proud of what they did and but everybody else is like we're gonna get them oh my god we found out what's going on we're gonna tell everyone and it's like you put the light on it i don't remember one fucking character's name from spotlight and i don't think they care if i do but i remember all those reporters and their story and how they were investigating and like the things that came in and how it personally touched them in their lives this this scoop movie get the fuck and like I like Billy Piper. I like Julian Anderson. You know, I like Rufus Sewell. I, like, these are great actors. I, I take nothing away from them, but this is a... Read the book. Read the book. I mean, I'm sure the book is much more interesting. But, like... I, like, <laughs> like, like are, are we supposed to be like, oh, oh, she sacrificed everything. She didn't talk to her kids, so that way she could go to work. Like, you're not my hero. You're an asshole. <laughs> right. You're an asshole, because if you were there or not, this guy was going to talk himself into an idiot, you yeah. know, is what the movie is portraying it. And I'm not saying yeah. that's real life, but it, the movie's portraying it that way. So like, I'm sorry. I, I went off on a tangent on that, but I, it really is because like all of these movies keep coming out for gotcha, 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 trying to pretend like they're spotlight and they're not because you're not writing a good story, but that's just me. Do you have any more you want to say on this? <laughs> no, I mean, why? Well, yeah, no, you I said kind of watched it out, right? Yeah. I mean, I think the next movie we're going to talk about is the kind of movie I want to see about journalism. There you go. All right. Well, let's give our ratings for this. I gave Scoop a two, no surprise. And Paul gave it a three because he really liked that she wore pants. <laughs> yep. That's, sure did. She was magical. You know. <laughs> it's tough, man. <laughs> they had to make a whole scene about that, too. Like Again, like stop putting yourself <laughs> in it. Stop putting yourself right. and like I'm not saying it didn't happen, and you could play that, but like that was that was the gotcha moments. Oh, this is who he is, is blah blah blah. And it's like do a spotlight then. <laughs> right. Just tell the story. Uh, and next up is Civil War. I'm excited for yes. this one. Me too. Um, <laughs> thank you, Paul. I want to thank you first before I say anything, before I tell you what this is about. I was not gonna go see this movie. Okay. I'm not exactly feeling very in the mood for politics lately. Mm -hmm. um, just because it's always so visceral and disgusting. 
So I saw Civil War and I was like, I just, and I saw like the trailer and I was like, it just seems very political. I wish they didn't do that because I bet you more and more people who feel like me would definitely rush out to get the, to see this for what the movie actually is. Um, I, uh, I really enjoyed this movie. And before and before we get into our how we feel and stuff like that, let's tell everybody what it's about. So, uh, but I wanted to thank you, Paul, before that, because you pushed me. You're like, I'm going to see this. I was like, ah, I don't really feel like seeing it. Um, <laughs> I was like, but I don't have anything like ready to review. Mm -hmm. And I went and saw it, and I liked it. And I, you know, that's testament to you. So I appreciate you for yeah. that. Uh, you got to push each other to do those things. Right. <laughs> but at least, like, you know, you're often saying thanks for the recommendation, this, that, and the right. other thing. There you go, man. This is yours. Like, you you recommended to me, man. I appreciate that. Anytime. <laughs> I really like this movie. And I'm going to get mine out of the way first because I have a feeling you have a lot to say, and I want you to roll. Okay. So <laughs> I really like this movie. Kirsten Dunst gave a great performance. I liked all the actors. Um, I like the story behind it. I like that, like, California and Texas are teaming up. You know, Florida's fighting back. Like, I got the premise of, like, what and how this all started and what's going on. I dug it. Uh, like, I didn't need much more. I just wanted to see these photojournalists traveling um, to, traveling through America and, and how dangerous that can be during a civil war. And, how, and sometimes how surprising that can be during a civil war. It was shot really well. The visuals are fantastic and chilling, very chilling. Uh, all throughout like and and i think this is an eye-opener for a lot of things and especially what's going on uh over in the middle east and um you know what's happening in the fire in the sky man like we're, we're seeing on, on the news uh it's it's there we see it in real world it exists so this looks so realistic and then it's at home and to see how new york city is handling things see how small towns are handling things uh see how virginia my home state is handling things washington dc like uh it's in interesting it was a very interesting introspective look at like division in this country and what it could look like uh i thought the story wasn't great it's the weakest part of everything um but it is a good story i thought i thought it was a good story because it's a simple story it's a travel story it's uh it, the characterization of this was the biggest point i got that so i don't mind it's like Star Wars. Star Wars doesn't have the greatest, like, most epic story of all time. It's a very simple story mixed with, with a mixed bag of under wonderful themes and, and other things. So I felt this about, uh, I felt about this movie sort of the same way in the story. Like, not a bad story, just a simple story. I dug it. I liked it. And, and the characters made it for me. The visuals made it for me. Um, Jesse Plemons is so chilling in this movie, more chilling than I think anything, uh, at this point and, and, and so scarily realistic. Um, so all of that mixed together, um, fantastic movie. I, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of, I didn't have a lot of fun with it, but I had a good time <laughs> watching it right. because it made me think that's all I'm going to say. I know you got a lot. Please go right ahead. I'm going to shut up. All right. Let, let's get to no. <laughs> Um, So I went into this, guys, thinking this was just going to be a Civil War uh, version of The Purge. I thought it was going to be a lot of what, deaths. What? I thought it was on. Oh. Are we good? No, you just got out a little bit. You'll be all right. Oh. Go for it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought Civil War was just going to be a North versus South version of The Purge. Um, is what I expected, because that's how the trailer really perceives it. And I, I even rewatched the trailer today with my mom and she was like, the movie you described is not what I just saw as far as the trailer. And I was like, no, absolutely. They, they kind of failed portraying what it's actually about. So when we, I realized it's about journalism and you know what they kind of got to go through and about disassociating yourself, um, I was thoroughly like intrigued once I realized, oh, this isn't really going to be all focused on the deaths or, you know, who's fighting who exactly. Um, I really enjoyed that. We didn't really get to find out who stood for what, like we knew it was civil war and we heard different States grouped together were against each other, but they didn't really say a hundred percent who stood for what. 
Um, so he kind of well, didn't... they do. I don't mean to cut you off. They do sort of insinuate, inferring that mm -hmm. California and Texas teaming up, the most left state mm -hmm. and the most right state, really says that whatever the whatever they were going right. after fighting against Washington D.C. and him serving a third term, right, is bad. <laughs> you right. know, so like, so I, like I'm glad you're right. I'm glad they didn't like over politicize or give you full measure but mm -hmm. that's what i liked about it i was like it can be vague right you are doing such a beautiful story with like all of the other alliances and then visually i thought i loved how some of the scenes they do the slow still pictures and the black and white i thought they did that superbly like i was cinematically very impressed by it and just like taken aback kind of on how good it was and how gripping they got those silent moments in those still pictures and things like that. Um, character development, I thought it was great. Like, a, like really showing someone in shock. You know, you see that one the poor girl like just vomits on herself, but it's not projectile because she's just she's not there. It's just her body reacting to everything going on. So it's just you know situations like that. If you've ever been in high trauma situations like that, that that's how it is. Like you just you're you're there. Your body is still reacting, but your mind is you're not okay. You're scrambled. And, um, I, I want to see it again. And I really hope people give it a chance. Um, even though the, the trailer makes it seem like it's going to be this violent fest of maybe, you know, rednecks against, you know, liberals, whatever, but, uh, that's not yeah. what this was. And I think, I think it deserves a lot more than what the trailer portrayed. And I hope, you know, you guys end up going to see it. And I think that's, uh, yeah, to add to that a little bit, like, cause you're right, it is misleading in that sense. Uh, and I, and, and I do hope people get to see it. Like you said, even if you like, to me, this is when you can wait till you get home. Mm -hmm. Um, like if you're asking my recommendation of like, should I run out to the theaters? Nah, just wait till streaming. It's worth watching though. I think you should check it out. I even had a rental you know maybe like yeah. chilling. It's not for kids or anything for sure, because there are violent moments. Like you have, you you do you just there there are violent moments and uh, you know but nothing overly crazy just yeah. kind of just like disturbing and haunting at times right. um but it do play it off like it is this blue versus red thing and i think that diminishes exactly what this is which is like a tyrant took over and americans are fighting for freedom right this isn't a civil war like it's it really isn't because if you think about it uh, almost everybody they run into is either like we don't want to be involved which is not unheard of for a civil war um and then there's like they're the even photojournalists like they live in the U u.s part you mm -hmm. know the part that still remains like the they think they called it the uh i forget what it was but it was like the u.s whatever like it was like the classic almost <laughs> like, like we were the, right. the loyalist or whatever so like they live there they are americans every day going out and watching the war and 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 taking pictures so for me this movie spoke to me on a way that was like it's not really a civil war as i mean i guess it could be because it's americans picking up and going after it's really just the U united states guard right that's fighting back uh -huh. and for on behalf of the president the secret service and stuff like that so it's the president's men that are literally were fighting. It's not everyday Americans on that side, really. Right. And I wish they portrayed it as like more of a tyrant. Like I would have called this movie more tyrant than Civil War, personally. Yeah. I can and agree then with that. and I just and like just like we've we've a tyrant has taken over these photojournalists who live in it. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, they just did such a great job with it. Everything was very, very cold, very it seemed calculated in certain yes. scenes. Yeah. Did a really well job. But we both wow. gave this a four. Yeah. Yeah. We both really like this one. Um, really well done. I actually wouldn't mind more if they're done the same way and then done with the same care. Uh, I, I don't want it to get too in-depth. I want it to be like this. But more stories of mm -hmm. this Civil War. Right. Right yeah but if it's if it's done terribly like if they walking dead it it would just be it's over or the Gosh. purge or something. It's, <laughs> right it's like come on you had a really good message and then you screwed it up but whatever 
uh yeah but anyway those are our reviews of scoop and civil war now is mix movie pick and then you might oh, recognize oh, the poster oh. from last week's classic film review it is 1989's do the right thing I'm going to also be shining a light on a lot of the movies that are celebrating anniversaries this year. And this one is celebrating the 25th anniversary of its release. Absolutely phenomenal movie. One of the groundbreaking t- five out of five movie for me. I think this is truly fantastic. I have to watch it once a year. Acting is great. Uh, directing is perfect. Um, characters are wonderful. A real in-depth street of race relations in, uh, back in the early 90s that still echo to today. It's so well done. Spike Lee cemented himself into the industry with this one. I love this movie. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, watch it. Uh, Again, it's celebrating its 25th anniversary. Yeah, I I don't know what more I can say about it. It's just, it's a truly fantastic movie, but uh, go check out Do the Right Thing if you can. That's my mixed movie pick for the week. I want to say thank you guys. I want to thank you, Paul, for being here. I want to thank Trevor for joining in, of course. Um, we'll be back next week. We're going to have some fun stuff going on. Uh, Wise will be joining us next week, so it's going to be cool. Um, okay. um, of course, Stuck in My Mind podcast. We love Wise. Um, guys, thank you again so much for uh, hanging out. We talked to you about Patreon. We talked to you about Discord. talked to you about our sponsor. talked to you about it all. So I'm just going to leave it be. Make sure you're there for the charity event on May 17th. That's right, May 17th. We're doing a charity script read, Casters for a Cause of Scream, baby. And that is Benefit, Haunters Against Hate. Carolina Fear Fest is sponsoring it. We'll be here, brought to you by us. Thank you guys again so much for being a part of this. Join us every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, hang out with us. You can talk to us or listen to us on any podcast platform afterwards. We'd appreciate the great reviews. We appreciate the subscribes, the likes. All of it goes a long way. Comment, be a part of it. Join us nomination. And I can't wait to see you guys at Carolina Fear Fest this year. Memorial Day yes. weekend. Yeah, we'll both be there when we have bells on. Paul, before we go, you want to say anything? Yeah, I mean, it's warming up. So uh, make sure to stay hydrated, you guys, because uh, heat exhaustion is a real thing. That's just great saying. advice. And I, I cannot say it better myself, but I will say this. Be kind to each other. Stay classy. Take care of yourselves because that's important. Take care.